Hi, welcome to Dear Art Producer. I am your host, Heather Elder, and in this time when we're all working from home, I still wanted to continue the podcast and bring you the voices of the people on the front lines who can help us all better understand what's happening in our industry and how to better prepare for when we come back. Today, we welcome executive producer Wendy Gordon from Work Productions, who works as both a creative and agency producer. Wendy started the Facebook page, Production Resources Coronavirus, and was my guest on the webinar I co-host with the workbook radio called Where We Are Now. So she has a lot of information she can share with us. Welcome, Wendy. Hi, Heather. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here. Absolutely. For our guests, where are you? I am in Brooklyn. I am in Brooklyn, in my house, just like everyone else in New York. And are you surrounded by everything you need? Are you connected to everyone you need to be connected to? Yeah, I am. I mean, we have internet and cell phone and my cat, so we're good. And what's your cat's name? (laughs) His name is Samson. And Samson's loving it. I think my dogs are just the happiest ever right now. (laughs) Why don't we start, Wendy, by just telling everybody just very quickly a little bit about what it is you do so they have an idea. So I've been a producer um, on both the creative and the agency side for about 20 years. I have a company called Work Productions, and I started out as a photo producer and quickly morphed into doing motion and digital and experiential and everything that falls under the integrated production umbrella. I tend to specialize in large-scale productions that travel And I have an office in Argentina, which has created a real opportunity to work a lot in South America as well as North America. I can't believe we've never worked together. I'm hoping that will change in the future. (laughs) I would love that. We've been talking a lot over the last week or so, and I'm really grateful to have been connected with you. You know, you really truly are on the front lines with your Facebook page. Why did you start that? And how did that come about? So... A couple of weeks ago, before we recognized that this was a pandemic, there started to be a lot of conflicting information and conflicting opinions about what was happening in production. And some people were concerned whether it was safe to shoot, to gather crew together. Other clients were still trying to continue to go through with productions. Travel was becoming more and more difficult every day. Safety supplies were becoming more and more difficult to acquire. And I thought that it was really important for our industry leaders, our art producers, our producers, our agents, our artist reps, um, and our photographers to sort of all come together to have an opportunity to create a consensus about where we stood on a safety and information point of view, I guess you could say. And it turned out the industry, well, the, the government and the spread of the virus changed so quickly that within only a few days of starting the page, uh, we already started to see stay-at-home orders in California, and then that moved to New York, and then to Illinois, and now quite a huge portion of our industry is kind of, for lack of a better word, locked down, or at least shut down for a while. Now, what sort of people are posting on that Facebook page, and what kind of information are they sharing? Everybody is posting. I think agency, producers, At first, they were posting about things that had to do with agency policies and jobs and things like that and sort of their status about what they were doing. There were a lot of questions at the time about insurance and liability. And then other parts of the industry who are freelancers are posting information about unemployment and how or can it be filed. Um, There's other information that's going up about resources for anyone whose work has been interrupted. I see it now as kind of like a clearinghouse for information. So everyone, of course, is welcome to post and ask questions and tell stories and and offer their, their advice about how we get through this together. Let's talk a little bit about the timeline of what you and I saw happening over the last couple of weeks in terms of productions. My husband has had his finger on the pulse of this thing for quite some time, you know, where at first we all made fun of him and now he's, you know, completely protected us. Um, so I saw it unfolding a little bit earlier, I would say, than other people in the industry. And I was really surprised by when we would bring it up, some people would 
you know, not dismiss it, but we just weren't ready to engage with it on that level because their clients were still pushing forward. So from my point of view, I was at the beginning, you know, I was still getting bid requests and we were still talking about doing productions. There was no talk of making the set safer from the client's point of view yet. There was no talk of postponements or anything like that, which surprised me. Um, and then pretty quickly, I would say within a couple of days, the phone calls started coming in. Can you live stream? How are you making your set safe? Um, what if we postponed? But I didn't get it didn't go from denial to cancellation overnight either. Um, what in the very beginning, what did you see happening? So on, like you, I started taking notice maybe three weeks ago. Um, in fact, I've been pretty much self-quarantined for the last three weeks. I started paying attention to what was going on in Italy and I became concerned, I guess you could say. And then everything was normal. Just like you say, we were still estimating, we were still moving forward. And I started to get concerned when I, um, I had a request from a client to have crew sign a liability waiver. and amongst producers, we were trying to figure out liability issues and insurance payment issues for cancellation. There was a lot of discussion about force majeure and other insurance. Would it pay? Would it not pay? Unemployment, all of these liability issues for producers. That was probably the first antenna that really went up. And then as we started within our industry to talk about remote solutions, I kind of had another antenna which was, wait a minute, our clients are prohibited from coming to the shoot because it's not safe, but our crew is being asked to shoot. And I started to really wonder, was it safe? As it became more apparent that there was no safety equipment, there was no gel, there were no gloves, there was no masks, I started to wonder, how in the world can I keep the crew safe? And so I very quickly went from a position of, let's try and accommodate as best we can with creative solutions, remote solutions, to a position that there is no such thing as a safe set. And I'm still of that opinion with certain very limited exceptions. Pretty quickly thereafter, we went to talking about postponements, cancellations, and um, you know that was kind of a scary time because that was immediately, um, you know, once the conversation started, it everything started to fall apart, which was a positive because I, like you and our photographers were of the mindset that, you know, we're, if we're supposed to be social distancing and if it's not uh, safe for a client or, you know, the agency to be on set, it's not safe for the crew. We're supposed to be socially distancing. Where does civic responsibility come into the picture? So, you know, on one hand, it was a positive and it was a relief. And on the other hand, it was incredibly scary and very anxiety producing as I'm sure it is for everybody. I feel like we got into this mode where we are all producers and none of us like to say no. And, you know, we all kept trying to figure out what's the workaround. And I remember on the webinar, you said there is no workaround to this. And I hope that provided some calm for people because we're so used to trying to figure it out and be the yes people. And we can't figure this one out in the short term, right? In the immediate right now. There is no really figuring this out. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, no no producer, no no creative person ever wants to say simply no. In fact, we're trained to, at the very least, if you say no, have an alternate, provide an alternate solution. And right now there there is none because it's a zero sum game there is no safe way to do this yet and i also deeply feel that we have a civic responsibility on the other hand i think some solo people and solo studios and people who shoot still life and things like that are probably able to offer some solutions to their clients which is great um if people can be really safe i encourage them to keep working but Production as we do it with crews and makeup and hair and wardrobe and the amount of time that the virus is able to live on surfaces, it's still unknown. Unfortunately, I just think we need to push pause. I think it's the responsible thing to do for ourselves as well as our clients. And what are you hearing from your producer friends inside agencies who are 
connected to their clients? What, what are the clients expecting? What are, where's their mindset right now? So I can't speak for the client's mindset. I'm not privy to that. But from the agency producers, I think the hope is to get our ducks in a row, so to speak, and line up budgets and jobs for the future as soon as the pause button is released. And so I personally am working on a couple of projects right now. There's no shoot date. We're just estimating running numbers and creating strategy for it. Um, I think we'll see some change to budgets as a result of this because I think we may need some flexibility in terms of, you know, when does the pause button get pushed? Do we just go back to the way things were? Is there an intermediate phase? Is there going to be a time where we're all shooting and taking protective measures? I think these things are unknown. I don't think we're going to know until we start to see the economy moving again, and no one knows when that will happen yet. On the other hand, putting things in the pipeline feels great because it creates a lot of hope that we're creating backlogs. So with any luck, we'll be very busy when when this is over. When this is over, I agree. My husband is has been in advertising forever and he's on the account side. And we talk all the time about our industries and the overlap and you know, we learn a lot from each other. And one thing I'm learning from him right now, because you know, obviously like everyone else, he's on calls all day long. And they are busier than ever in terms of helping their clients prepare for what's coming. So I find that positive right now, um, that they are trying to be proactive and not be frozen in time and to really prepare for when they all come back. And hopefully when they all come back, that preparation is going to mean it's going to trickle down to us. Yeah, I agree. I think there have been some sort of unintentional good consequences as a result of all of this. I think issues about liability and insurance and contractual language have sort of really come to the forefront. I think that there's an opportunity maybe for our industry to take another look at the way we're doing business in terms of for a very long time, especially the photo part of the industry has been a little bit, um, let's just say a little bit more relaxed. And over the last few years, we've seen payroll coming in really strongly into photo shoots. And thank goodness, because our crew is able now, those crew members who were payrolled are able to file for unemployment now, which is a a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think that maybe a standardizing of some business practices that address some of the legal aspects, um, maybe have a new light shown on them. And I think that that's a good thing. I do too. I think internally here, what we're working on, you know, there are definitely the reactive things that we're working on. How can I pivot my business right now to, to provide the visual solutions that my clients need right now in this moment where we can't go out and shoot, but we're also having big conversations about what does the future look like to us? And what are we learning here about, like you said, about our contracts, about our production process that we want to evolve to better, not only protect, but to better serve whatever the future is going to be looking like. On the webinar, you and I were talking about the, all of us were talking about the the different stages, right? right? Right now we were calling it the short term, which we're just trying to figure out what's visually possible now. How can we check in with people? How can we be present for people? How do we keep things more moving and prepare for what's coming? I think the midterm is what happens after that pause button is lift, right? After we hit play and we were saying, how do we produce and protect? And I don't know that we have that answer fully figured out yet. Um, definitely live streaming is an option and Everybody can do it. It's super easy, but it's not just protecting the client from being on set. You know, how do we protect our, our hair and makeup people from, and our talent Our you know, so many of our talent are older people or younger people, right? How do we protect them? How do we clean the surfaces? How do we deal with liability in that situation? How do we, if we're renting, we're going to a location that, you know, somebody was at before. How does that, like, there's so many questions that haven't been answered yet. Um, so I'm happy to hear that, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there talking about it and trying to figure it out. And I think we're a resourceful group. We will figure it out. But then I think there's also the long term. 
which we don't know what that long term is going to look like, because I feel like the short term and the midterm are going to inform what that long term looks like. And, you know, what if this comes back in the fall? Right. Then we're I mean, hopefully we're better prepared than we were the first time. But how will our industry change? And like you and I said before the call started, how can we be a part of that change and evolve it with everyone? Yeah, I mean, I I always make this joke as a producer that you know, gosh darn it, my crystal ball just broke, and um, sorry, I I I don't know, I really don't know what happens. As the I I have no sense of how this trajectory is going to be, but I do know that um, we've already been in sort of a sea change of our industry changing and addressing business models and how we are offering services and whether it's in response to this pandemic or just in response to general changes in the industry is something that I think is ongoing. And now is as good a time as any to sort of take a look at how are we offering production? How are we offering visual solutions? Um, You know, over the last couple of years, we've seen a big change into what I'm going to call sort of small footprint hybrid productions that incorporate motion and still shooting. You know, how do we keep servicing that. I think it's very important that we understand that the clients have their budgetary needs, but also in our ability to produce something at a certain standard, there are certain costs that just can't get reduced. And I think that addressing some of those things and educating our clients about where there's flexibility and where there's not is an ongoing procedure for us. So I don't know. I mean, I'm very hopeful. And I think you know, I, who did I hear the other day that, you know, the only thing more contagious than the virus is hope or something like that. And I'm hopeful. Um, you know, those of us who have been in the industry for a while, we've, we've survived really bad periods. We've survived bad economies. We've survived 9-11. We survived the downturn in 2008. So I think that we will continue to work. Will it look exactly the same? I'm sure that it wouldn't without the pandemic. So um, that's that's all I've got right now is that I'm hopeful. And if it comes yeah. back, we'll deal with it. That's what we do. We deal with things as they come up. I, I said that from the beginning. We are a group of resourceful people who figure things out. So I am I know that we will figure things out. What I know that we can't do is forget about each other along the way. You know, it's so important to check in with each other right now, yeah. present for emotionally you know no who's no one's really talking about the emotion of what's going al- along with this you know I checked in with someone the other day and I'm like so what time does your anxiety kick in yeah. and she was like, we were laughing about it I'm like well it, it usually kicks in at three in the morning I'm like but lately I've been able to kind of hold it off till about 11 or 12 o'clock I, I'm the opposite mine starts at about seven it ends at about nine when I finally convinced myself to get up get dressed get the day started and um I think that we're on an emotional roller coaster. I think it is extremely important to reach out to the people in your family, but also your colleagues, just to gossip, have a glass of wine over your video, um, have a cup of coffee in the morning with someone. I think these things are going to be really important because no matter how used to some of us are working at home, this is isolating because we're there's also anxiety wrapped into it. Yeah. So I think that once we can be sure that our basic needs are covered, like, you know, we're not getting kicked out of our houses and we have food and our loved ones are okay and the electricity is not going to get turned off. I think if we can cover all of those things for a while, we have some time to think about um, how do we move our industry forward? How do we move our own businesses forward? And maybe even take some time to do something that I've always wanted to do, you know, like get better at Photoshop. Maybe now is a good time for me to do it or learn Italian. And what are some other producers that you've stayed connected with? Is anybody thinking of alternate income streams or, you know, what is on their to-do list while we're here in this moment? Yeah, I think a lot of the other producers are thinking along the same lines I am, that we have this amazing skill set that really is useful out there in a world that needs a lot of help right now. And so the idea of sort of repurposing your skill set, I think for producers is kind of a natural fit. We are born problem solvers and we are born organizers. And dare I say, we are also born just a little bit bossy. And I think that 
means that we have some leadership capabilities and there's a lot of need right now for people within your community. I think there's there's a lot of places we can repurpose. Um, in terms of changing a business strategy, I'm not particularly focused on that right now. For me, it's really pretty day-to-day. I spent a good portion of yesterday cleaning the inside of my refrigerator, which seemed like a really good use of my time. So, <laughs> so um, you know, I, I'm, I'm staying connected to people. I'm working on estimates. I'm taking a breather. I'm trying to make sure I'm okay and the people in my world are okay. I'm also trying to help where I can. So I think that's all we can do today. Tomorrow is going to be another day. We're going to get another bunch of statistics. We're going to hear another order from the government. And I think that's all we, I think that's all we can do right now. You know, I, I read something once about, you know, what's the right thing to say to someone who's sick, um, like really sick. Um, and I, and the answer was how, I hope today is a good day or how are you today? Yeah. As opposed to how are you? This like big open ended question. And I find myself saying that all the time now to people, like, how are you today? Like, is today a good day for you? And it goes back to what you're saying, you know, taking it one day at a time. Um, I feel like from a rep point of view and a community, somebody in the, who's been very connected to the community for years through my podcast and my blog, and from a, you know, somebody who partners with these photographer point of view, we are, there's so many different things we're doing in terms of, you know, pivoting to be a, res, a continued resource for our clients. But at the same time, we have to remember to do things like clean out our refrigerator, <laughs> go for a walk, you know, be present for ourselves and our families. And because if we're not, what was the point of this pause button? Yeah, I think that also addresses sort of the emotional aspect of what we're going through. I personally feel like I'm on a roller coaster and my mood and my um, feeling of perseverance and my feeling of optimism, it kind of changes minute to minute. And so I feel that I've got waves where I feel great and other waves where I'm not so good. And so I'm trying really hard to kind of just make my day smaller, you know, instead of giving myself a huge to-do list of things that I must get through, it's, it's small and the goals are kind of modest. Like, you know, I found toilet paper. Yay. You know, (laughs) um, I'm still on a big quest for hand gel, you know? Um, and so I think that especially with some pending things that I've got going on, I think everybody has sort of slowed it down. You know, if you don't answer an email for an hour, I don't think anyone's going to become, you know, where are you? Um, So that, that's really, I mean, I don't have any pretense to offer advice to anyone. I'm just trying to just sort of um, figure it out for myself. Um, But I, but I feel that trying to make my world a little smaller, even though it's in the confines of my house it's helping me or at least make my my task list a little bit more i don't know granular let's say so today you know i give myself something to do in the house something to do for work something to do outside something to do with my 17 year old cat you know i'll say hello to my husband periodically cuz we're both still working <laughs> um and that's the day you know then i'll yeah. watch the news conferences and that's that's the day today well I always like to end my podcasts with something personal. And I literally just thought of this question right now. Um, What did you panic buy? (laughs) Like a bunch of Amazon boxes showed up at my house, you know, two weeks ago. And my my husband was like, what is this? I'm like, it was my panic buy over the weekend. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I found two bottles of Lysol and I we don't have any in the house and I had to buy them. He's like, so why would I qualify? I'm like, because I went on eBay and I paid way more than I should have for them. All right. So you're no one's going to believe the answer to this, but actually nothing. But there's a reason why. A, as a producer, I tend to be pretty well stocked to begin with. However, I'm going to gross everybody out. I had a mouse infestation in my home not long ago and went through an incredible sanitation process of cleaning where the mice had been, um, had made their homes. And so believe it or not, I have left six masks. I have gloves. I have more Lysol than I know what to do with. And I even have Clorox wipes. And my husband was 
great and went and bought toilet paper. So really nothing. Um, we, we, we are okay here for a little while. And, um, are you going to the supermarket? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm taking advantage of New York being a city of delivery and I've only been out of my front door twice in the last three weeks. I'm very concerned about making sure that my health isn't affected because I might have, um, I might be a little bit more susceptible. So just trying to go out the back door, not the front door, <laughs> going well, out to the garden. That's great. At least I well, have go- one, yeah. A back door. You can see some sky and get some yeah. fresh air. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, this has been really, really amazing and very helpful. I appreciate it. And for those of you who are listening, remember to check out the Facebook page called Production Resources Coronavirus. Wendy, honestly, I wish you all the health and all the pause that you need right now. I hope you're surrounded by everyone and everything that you need. And just um, know that you know you, there's a community out there that really appreciates everything that you're doing. I am so grateful for our amazing community, for the people I've met, for the relationships that I've reinforced. Um, I think that the only thing to say to everybody right now is stay safe. Stay yeah, safe. Yeah. And we'll see you on the other side of this. Wash your hands. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, right. Heather, for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you so much.